How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs and today I want to run you through how to do a furnace tune-up. Now you should be doing this yearly whether you're doing it yourself trying to save $75 to $125 or you're calling in a professional. This is good knowledge to have to make sure the maintenance is being done correctly. So I called in a professional, Dave from the DIY HVAC guy to run you through how he does this for all of his customers so you can have that knowledge and take this project on yourself. So regardless of where your furnace is, the general layout is going to be the same. Uh, this is a Goodman upflow furnace. Uh, the evaporator coil might be down below or up above like this one. If it's in an attic, this whole furnace might be uh, going horizontally. But don't be intimidated when you get to your furnace and you see a lot of mechanical things. Uh, the guts of these furnaces are all pretty much the same. So the only tool that we're going to need to do this furnace maintenance is a 5 16 and a quarter inch nut driver. So not very uh, complicated at all. This particular one uh, just has these hand tightened uh, fasteners. So we're just gonna remove the front cover here. So for all of my customers, I do a core four step process with all of my furnace maintenances. And the first is safety. So we wanna shut off our electricity and our gas. Now your electric box, this one is attached to the furnace. Yours might be a couple feet away on another, uh, on another wall, uh, but just make sure you cut off the power to keep yourself safe. So step number two is very quick and simple. It's just checking the air filter and seeing if we need to replace that. So your air filters can be in various locations depending on your home. Uh, this one is very easy, located right on the side. Uh, this could be in a ceiling register. So just uh, locate your air filter, make sure you know where it's at. And my recommendation as far as when to replace the filter is generally every three months. Now this varies depending on if you have a pet that sheds, if you have allergies, things of that nature. But if you're not um, going to extremes with that, uh, three months is a good gauge for when to replace your air filter. So another thing to note is that your air filter is going to have an arrow on this. And a lot of my customers don't know what that arrow means and how to properly put in this air filter. So a couple of things here. When you look at your furnace, you will notice with your air conditioner that you'll have copper lines going into the evaporator coil. And that is the direction that the air is going to be flowing. So with this one, our air comes through the side of the cabinet and it blows up through the evaporator coil. So with that in mind, we know that the arrow should be pointing this way. So another thing that I do um, to help my customers out is I'll just take a Sharpie and I'll mark on the duct an arrow right here pointing to the correct direction. And that way there's never any concern as to uh, which direction it goes. Step number three is going to be cleaning the furnace. And part of that is the number one most common failure that I see on a regular basis on a furnace and it is this flame sensor. So we don't want to mistake our hot surface igniter for the flame sensor. Now the way we can tell that the hot surface igniter, uh, which component that is, is the hot surface igniter or the spark igniter will have multiple wires coming off of it. And this is what's actually going to ignite the flames. The flame sensor on the other hand will, is a very simple metal rod and it goes right in front of the burner here and it just senses a flame. Now the problem arises when this flame sensor gets dirty over the years and it thinks that there is no flame, so it will turn the system off. So for this particular one, we're going to remove the flame sensor. So here on our flame sensor, we notice this white buildup that's what we're looking for um, with a dirty flame sensor. Now what we're gonna be using is just a regular wire brush. Um, a lot of people are concerned about being too aggressive with the flame sensor, and that's really not something that you have to worry about. You can use pretty much any grit sandpaper. As a matter of fact, you can actually use a dollar bill. It's abrasive enough to where it'll just remove that white buildup, and that's all you have to do. So we'll go ahead and put this back in, and that part will be complete. Okay. 
So there's a lot of different specialty tools uh, that you can use for the flame sensor. As you just saw, this one is one that's a little bit tighter um, area. It's harder to get to. And so um, one other thing is be very cautious with raw edges like this. I actually cut myself on this furnace. Um, so if you don't have access to uh, a tool to get to the flame sensor, another option is a simple pipe brush. These will be in the link. These will be in the description below as well. And what you can do is just feed this through, just taking your time and working it up and down on the flame sensor. So the last part of step three is good old fashioned cleaning. We're gonna, we're gonna take out a vacuum cleaner and clean out the inside of the cabinet, wipe it down with a wet rag. And something you can do also is get a can of compressed air and you can spray off the circuit board and make sure that that's nice and clean as well. So one last thing with the cleaning is the blower wheel can also get buildup on it as you can see on these fins that I'm moving. Uh, in order to clean this properly, you have to pull the blower assembly out to clean it. Uh, if you'd like to get more information on this, hop over to my channel, the DIY HVAC guy, and we have some specific videos on how to clean the blower wheel. Step number four is we're going to be running through a complete cycle on the furnace just to make sure that everything is working like it should. So the first thing we're gonna do is flip our power back on, turn our gas on, and make sure that the thermostat is calling for heat. So just bump it up a few degrees. Now the first thing you'll notice is your inducer draft motor will come on, and this is just pulling all of the exhaust fumes out of the heat exchanger and out of your exhaust flue. The pressure switches will say, okay, um, everything is good to go. And the next thing you'll notice is the glow, is the hot surface igniter will glow red. After which we will hear the gas valve turn on and that will send gas across that hot surface igniter and then we will have ignition. So there we go, we've got our flames. Now the flame sensor is sensing that flame and telling the board, okay, continue. And the next thing that will come on after about 30 seconds is the fan will blow that air over the hot heat exchanger, allowing you to have warm air coming out of your vents. So during this stage, we'll just make sure that there's no strange noises coming from the inducer. And a major thing that we want to keep in mind here is that the flames are blue. Now, if you see orange flames when you look in here, you see a lot of orange, that's a good indicator that the heat exchanger could possibly have a crack or there's an issue with exhaust, not enough exhaust being pulled out of the uh, flue. Now, if you have a little bit older furnace, I would always recommend getting an eye on the heat exchanger. Uh, that's a little bit more in depth, but it's always a good practice to keep you and your family safe during a long winter season. Another thing to keep in mind every fall, and this might sound funny, but a lot of customers, they see a blank thermostat and they don't realize that there's batteries in the back. So it's a good practice to just swap the batteries out every fall and that way you don't have to worry about it. Most importantly, a combo smoke and carbon monoxide detector like this one is not what I would recommend for your home. Check out this video right here and I'm gonna show you the CO detector that I recommend that I use in my home and why it's a safer option for you and your family. 